What's up, filmers? Welcome back to the Long Lens Podcast. This is the Q&A filmmaking podcast where I try to answer your questions to the best of my abilities. So if you're new here, this is the bread and butter of this podcast. Basically just me trying my best to answer your questions about filmmaking or YouTube. So we do these at the beginning of the month and the way that it works is I answer my Patreon questions first and then I move on to my YouTube community. And I've even started adding some speak pipe messages into this podcast, which is been really fun. So we got a couple of those. We got some good questions in on Patreon and on YouTube. But before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping. If you would like to learn more from me about cameras and lightings and just kind of see some behind the scenes of how I make my YouTube videos, Patreon is the best place to get all of that bonus stuff. You'll also get access to my $5 What's for free. Obviously, you get your questions answered on the podcast first, plus a little shout out. There's just a bunch of other videos that I'll post there and nowhere else. So that's the best place to go if you want some extra content and some perks. I believe this is episode 59 and we're in October. So I do these once a month. Sometimes I have an extra episode here or there if I have a guest on. But yeah, it's October, which means it's my birthday coming up pretty soon. And I'm going to be 34, which is pretty crazy. Anyways, as far as gear goes, if you are watching this on YouTube, you'll be seeing me on a Panasonic GH5 and I'm shooting in 1080p, 10-bit, and I'm just recording into my trusty Comica mic that I've had for years now. I still haven't uh, figured out which audio recorder I'm gonna get. I'm actually probably thinking about the Zoom H1 XLR, that new one that came out with 32-bit float and two XLR inputs. I'm thinking about that, I've been thinking about the Panasonic XLR adapter just to plug right into my GH5. We'll see. I'm shooting on the Lumix 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8. So if you're listening to this podcast, none of this is important, but if you wanna see what it looks like, head over to my YouTube channel, Nigel Bajos 2. That's Nigel Bajos, T-O-O, and you can see what this podcast looks like. <laughs> All right, without any further ado, let's get into the questions. All right, the first question is from Dylan McMurdy, and Dylan asks, ever considered making a Discord? They're a hit and miss sometimes, but if done right, they're pretty fun. Yeah, I've thought about it, and I just, I feel like that's just too many things at this point, for me at least. Like, I've got my main channel, my second channel, my Patreon, my Instagram, just all these different platforms that I'm trying to keep up with, and it's just, it's a lot. So if I had a Discord, I feel like it would be just one more thing that I would have to like check in on and, you know, try to work on or whatever. And I just, I know that they're, they're really powerful for, you know, for building a community, I guess, but I feel like that's kind of what I want my Patreon to be like. I wish Patreon had a better, they have like a community message tab, which I think is kind of like a Discord, but I know that it just doesn't work as well. I've considered it. I'm not saying that I'll never do it, but right now I just feel like there's just too many things that I'm trying to juggle. All right, the next question is from a newer Patreon. It's from Louise Strina. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And Louise asks, hey, I got a great deal on the GH5. I paid about 380 for it, which is 525 Canadian. What settings do you recommend to get the best quality out of it? And what's the best SD card for it? Thanks. Yeah, I mean, the best settings, I would say, I mean, if you wanna get the best image that you can out of it, I would either shoot in the 6K anamorphic open gate, which is you know gonna give you a 6K resolution image, or I would shoot in 4K 10-bit 422 all high, which is a very beefy codec, and you are gonna need some pretty hefty SD cards. I did a whole video on that here on the second channel. I'll try to link it up here in a card, but you are gonna need some pretty fast SD cards, but luckily they're not super expensive. The ones that I use are the Lexar, they're V60 cards, I believe, the Lexar V60 cards, and they work. I did a whole video on it. Again, I'll put it up in a card somewhere. Those are the ones that I would recommend. They're not super expensive. They're like 30 or 40 bucks. And yeah, those are all of the questions on Patreon. Big thanks to Dylan and Louise for sending in those questions. And now I actually have some speak pipe questions. So let's listen to the first speak pipe question, which is from Nua Ruiz. I think that's how you pronounce it. I just want to know um, which is your preference for um, a filmic uh, lens uh, that you go straight out of the camera with the GH5. I'm looking for a, I don't I, I don't care if it's a vintage, if it's prime, if it's a zoom. Uh, I just want to know like. Uh, all in one, like 
everything <laughs> but you get uh, without um, coloring the image the, the film will look <laughs> sorry for <laughs> sorry for a lo long audio I love you Nigel <laughs> hey thanks for that message that was really nice um, yeah so it looks like they're wanting a lens that gives a filmic look straight out of camera without having to do color grading which I don't know. I think there's two ways to go about that. If you just want to get a good image out of the GH5 without color grading, you can just set up a custom picture profile. Something with like natural or portrait would probably work good. Or Cinelike V is also a pretty good color profile just to shoot baked in colors. But as far as a lens that will give a filmic look, there are a lot to choose from and there isn't really one that I would say is perfect because a lot of the zoom lenses for Micro Four Thirds, like the ones that I'm using right now, the 12-35, to I wouldn't say that this gives you a filmic look. Uh, it gives you a very clean, professional look, I guess. Not necessarily a filmic look. Lenses that I've used that give kind of a, you know, a vibe are lenses like the Seven Artisans 25mm f1.7. That one gave kind of a soft filmic look. The Helios, you know, 44M or whatever, that one will give a really filmic look. It gives very, you know, crazy swirly backgrounds. So if you just wanted to bake in a look with a cool lens, something like that would probably be a good option. But again, those are fixed focal length lenses. You'll have to like start collecting, I think, vintage lenses if you want to get a look just baked into camera. And again, I would say shooting in Cinelike V is a good option and just finding lenses with a little bit of character. Like the Seven Artisans 25 millimeter F1.8, that lens does actually have some character to it. And it's a newer lens that you can buy like right off of Amazon for like 70 bucks. So that could be a good lens to start with and then just kind of like building up your lens kit from there. So that's what I would suggest. If you wanted to go the vintage lens route, you could get something like a Filtrox speed booster and then start adapting Helios and like the Mur 37B. That's what I would do. If you are looking for some vintage lens inspiration, I did a video on my main channel talking about the Vivitar lenses that I use and you can get those for like 20 bucks a piece on eBay. So that's another option. Vintage lenses are a pretty good route to take if you just want an easy vintage vibe to your videos. But yeah, thanks for that question. So we have another SpeakPipe message, but they didn't leave their name. So this will just be anonymous. How can I start a YouTube channel? I always keep thinking about starting. I think about perfection, how to get started, what can help me. So that's another really good question. How to start a YouTube channel and not worry about it being perfect. Honestly, that's a really hard hurdle to jump. And I feel like a lot of my friends who are trying to start YouTube channels right now, trying to build their YouTube channels up, that's their biggest hurdle is they don't want to post a video because they want it to be at a certain quality. But but I think the problem with that mindset, and I mean, I still struggle with it too, is like we have a pretty good idea of what a good video looks like. And when our videos don't meet that standard, we feel like we're not good enough. And I think that's the biggest hurdle that you have to jump over. Is that like, you're going to be bad at something when you first start. Uh, if you're already really good, you probably don't have that struggle with perfectionism. But I feel like it's when you're first starting out where you're not creating stuff that's up to par with what you want, that's the hardest hurdle to jump through. And I'm still, I still struggle with that. But I mean, I hate always bringing up skateboarding analogies, but I, I think that, you know, my time as a skateboarder has really helped me with that because when I first started skateboarding, I sucked, right? And if I wanted to be the perfect skateboarder and I didn't want to show up at a skate park until I was great, I would never get anywhere with it. And not to say that I'm like this great skateboarder now, I'm not, I'm pretty average, but I'm a lot better than I was when I first started and I'm a lot more confident in it. So I think that the same applies for YouTube. Like you just have to start and you have to, you know, climb cringe mountain as they say, be bad and be okay with being bad but eventually you'll get better and it just takes the reps you like you have to put in the reps to get started so just don't like give yourself a little bit of grace be patient with yourself you're not going to be the best filmmaker or the best youtuber when you first start out but everybody has to start out all of the people that you look up to 
started making horrible videos. I started making really, really bad videos. And I've, I've like nuked entire YouTube channels that I started, you know, back when I was a teenager that you'll never be able to find again, uh, except for one. There's one still alive on YouTube that is one that I started when I was 16 years old. But I mean, I like I sucked when I started and I'm still nowhere near where I want to be. But it's because I started that I'm at the place that I am at now. So that's what I would encourage you with is it's like, don't don't hold yourself to a crazy high standard. Shoot for that standard, but know that like it's going to take some time to get there. So I hope that helps. Don't know your name, but I hope that helps. OK, and now let's go on to the YouTube community page. OK, this one's a little long. The first question that we have on the YouTube community page is, uh, hi, did by chance maybe Lumix reach out to you for the new cameras? trip to Japan, etc. I'd hope yes, because I really don't trust most YouTubers, but you are the exception. By the way, your LUT pack for the city like D to log LUT for my GH4. I can now use the camera once more in my Cinematch film convert multicam workflow setup. After three years of collecting dust, it is holding up when you know how to expose against the modern cameras. I do, I mean, I wouldn't even say I have a working relationship with Lumix. I've emailed them like three or four times in the last couple of months and they just never get back to me. So, I mean, I have worked with Lumix, but I wouldn't say that like I'm on uh, talking terms with any of the people that I've you know talked to before. Um, I've never been reached out for a trip to Japan or anything like that. At this point, I don't even know if I would go if they offered it to me. Maybe I would, but I'm just I'm not super into all the new camera hype. It's not really it's not really what I want my channel to turn into. It's one of those channels that just talks about the new cameras constantly. It's just that just isn't interesting to me anymore. Like no shade to people who do make those types of videos. I just, I'm not interested in it anymore. Not that I wouldn't, you know, talk about a GH7 if Lumix wanted to send me one, but it just doesn't seem like they're interested in doing that. So I I'm glad that my, my Cinelike D LUTs are working well on your GH4. It's cool that you can still use it in combination with your other cameras because of that. So next question, could you share when a novice YouTuber such as myself should switch from the vivid video settings, which I don't color grade, to another like Cinelike D or Vlog to up my video quality. Currently, I'm a G95 user and shoot primarily 1080-60. I'm gonna guess by your username that you shoot BMX and like action sports. Honestly, like for the stuff that you shoot, you're probably okay uh, baking in the color. I would say once you start getting into doing more like cinematic stuff where a little bit of extra dynamic range can help or you actually want to start color grading your stuff uh, to look a certain way that's when i would switch center like d is a pretty good starter picture profile to start out on because it's not super flat so it's not super hard to grade and there are luts like my center like d lut pack that you can use which aren't that expensive and just get some really easy looks to it vlog i wouldn't necessarily recommend for the camera that you have because the g95 shoots in what's called 8-bit color and so 8-bit color will fall apart a lot when you shoot in vlog and it's just not the best like picture profile to use on 8-bit footage. I'm shooting on a GH5 right now, which is shooting in 10-bit, which has millions of more colors than 8-bit does. And so you can actually work with 10-bit footage in Vlog a lot easier than you can in 8-bit. So that's something that I would say is like maybe mess around with Cine like D first before you try to experiment with either getting a new camera to shoot Vlog or shooting Vlog on your G95 because it's pretty tricky. I'm not saying that it's impossible to shoot Vlog in 8-bit. It is possible. I did it on a GH4. It's just the image falls apart really quickly when you try grading it. So the next question is best lens for a beginner filmmaker to go with the Panasonic GH5. I mean, it's kind of a hard question if I don't know what you're filming. The lens that I'm shooting on right now, the 12 to 35 f2.8 is a great option just as like a do everything lens. As you can see, you can shoot YouTube videos with it. You can shoot a lot of different stuff with this zoom lens. It's essentially a 24 to 70. 2.8 on the GH5 isn't like the brightest aperture ever. You will have to light your stuff if you're gonna be shooting indoors like I am. But I mean, shooting outside, it's great. It's a par focal lens, it's, you know, it's image stabilized. Another good option is just to, you know, start collecting some of the cheaper primes, like the 25 mil F17, the 42.5 F17, and then maybe the 14 millimeter F2.5. Or you could even just get the kit lens, 
the 12 to 60, 3.5 to 5.6 if you wanted a cheap zoom, and then just get the 25 and the 42.5. Those could be some good starter lenses for your GH5 if you're a beginner. All right, next question is, would you recommend an upgrade from the GH5 to a GH7 based on the S52X's autofocus performance? I currently shoot sports content and I'm looking to switch to 4K 120 aspect, but I don't know if I'm ready to switch from the MFT sensor. Yeah, honestly, I say if you're shooting sports and you want something with good autofocus that you can switch to from your GH5, I would almost look into the G9 Mark II. That might be a more cost-effective option to switch to. The GH7 is obviously awesome, but you might be paying for features that you're not necessarily going to use you know, shooting sports. So, and you really can't beat the form factor of Micro Four Thirds with like longer lenses. I mean, you could put a 35 to 100 and shoot sports with a G9 Mark II, have great autofocus. And sure, you're not gonna get the, the separation that you would on a full frame camera with a 70 to 200, but you're shooting sports. Like you don't need insane shallot up the field, I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, like if you're shooting soccer or football games or whatever, like you don't need it. I mean, the difference between 200 millimeter equivalent, you know, micro four thirds, like background separation and 200 millimeter on a full frame camera background separation, I don't think you're really gonna care that much, to be honest. So that's what my personal suggestion would be is I'd probably go with a G9 Mark II that's just what I would recommend. I would I would look into the G9 Mark II. It would probably be a, a more cost-effective switch. All right, next question is, is the Olympus EM1 Mark II better than the G85? That is a really hard question. Just let me give you some pros and cons of both of them so maybe you could figure it out for yourself. The EM1 Mark II has amazing autofocus, so making YouTube videos and stuff like that would be great. Pretty good battery life, so you're not really gonna have to worry about switching batteries too much. You could have three batteries and it'd be great. And it has really nice looking 4K video. The cons with the EM1 Mark II is the log format is very odd and not a lot of LUT packs are available for it. I did make a LUT pack for OM Log 400, but it's not the easiest log profile to grade. Uh, it only shoots an 8-bit, so you're not getting any 10-bit out of a camera like that. It's got kind of finicky audio controls, so you have to like mess with a bunch of settings to make sure that like audio gets into your camera. There's just little things like that that don't lend itself to be a great filmmaker's camera. But at the same time, I mean, again, all the pros that I just said, it's got great image stabilization too. The GD5 I like better, but the pros of the GD5, great image stabilization. It's got, you know, picture profiles that are much more common like Cinelike D and Cinelike V. It's got better more like natural looking 4K image than I think the EM1 Mark II. The EM1 Mark II is very almost overly sharp sometimes and it's smaller, which I really like as well. The cons with the G85 are bad autofocus. So you're not gonna be able to have the same autofocus performance that you would from like an EM1 Mark II. It's got that weird like HDMI thing where if you plug an HDMI monitor into it, the, the sensor crops in and that's what you record into is a cropped in sensor of already cropped in 4K. It's another thing is that it crops in in 4K. So you're not getting the full sensor, the full micro four third sensor out of the G85. The M1 Mark II doesn't crop in at all. You get the full sensor. So 16 millimeter is, you know, 32 or whatever, whereas a 16 millimeter on the G85 would be more like a 35, 37 millimeter. Another pro of the G85 is that it's got really good 1080p, whereas the EM1 Mark II's 1080p is garbage. So there's pros and cons to both of them. Um, I loved both of those cameras, and I don't really think that you could go wrong with either of them. You can get good images out of both. That's what I would say, which is, I know, not helpful at all. Gun to my head, I'd probably pick the EM1 Mark II just because I feel like it compromises a little bit less than the G85. That's not to say they don't love the G85, because I do, but the E1 Mark II is a little bit more of a professional camera. It is a flagship camera, whereas the G85 is a entry level, like beginner camera almost. All right, next question is, how do you remain consistent in posting videos? Because I've tried it and gosh darn it, it's genuinely very tough, so how do you do that? Yeah, it definitely is hard. I. I keep myself on a kind of a loose schedule. So right now I'm trying to get at least two videos out a month, which I think is a pretty tangible thing for me to do. The thing that I really think has helped me make YouTube videos is not just turning the camera on, having a loose idea, 
rambling to the camera and then trying to figure out a video to make from it. That's the worst way to make videos in my opinion. I think that the way that you're gonna make videos consistently is by writing them first, like writing out your entire video. And I'm not saying scripting it like you're reading off of a teleprompter, but just writing out everything that you wanna say, all the footage that you need, everything that you can write out about your video, do that first before you even turn on the camera. And that's what I've found has helped me so much in my video creation process. Because once you can kind of write out your video and even maybe tackle it in chunks, so like think of your video as a three part act, like intro, middle, end, then it's a lot less daunting to try to make the video in the first place. That's how I kind of structure all my videos, all my videos on my main channel is intro, the meat of it, and then kind of like a conclusion at the end. So that's what I would say is try doing your videos like that. It has helped me so much. I film different talking heads for different sections of the video so I can help keep it kind of like, you know, compartmentalized. So this part of the video has a talking head, that part of the video has a talking head. And sometimes I'll even just skip talking heads and I'll just do voiceovers for certain parts. And I don't know, that's just helped me a lot. And it's helped me stress out about my videos less because I can work on them without being in my editor. I can write them out first and then film them as opposed to filming a talking head of me just rambling, hoping that I'm going to put all the information into the video file that I need. And then just getting back, getting frustrated because I forgot to mention something and then having to go back, refilm stuff. That's the part that I think really burns me out and probably a lot of other people. So that's what I would say. Don't do it like that. Write your videos out first. And I think that's going to help you a lot. Okay. And the last question is, do you still have a GH3? Right now, I don't. That may change in the future because I seem to be buying those cameras all the time just because when I see them for a really good deal, I just can't help it. But right now, I don't have a GH3. The Micro Four Thirds GH itch that I have has been kind of filled by the GH5 that I'm shooting on right now. I have thought about buying a GH3 just so I can make a more specialized LUT pack for that camera because I just I still love that camera and sometimes I look at the videos that I've shot with it and it's like man it still looks really good for a $200 camera you know but no right now I don't have a GH3 I will probably end up picking one up if it's only just to live on a shelf because that it that camera did build my channel right now no GH3 just rocking it's younger brother, the GH5. <laughs> so anyways, those are all the questions that I have for this episode of the Long Lens Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I can't believe that we're getting close to 60 episodes, which is gnarly. But yeah, hopefully I'll have another guest on pretty soon. I got some people in mind that I need to uh, slide into their DMs and ask them if they're down. <laughs> anyways, thanks again for listening and watching here on the channel. And I'll catch you all next time. Later. Later.